a new year is upon us, and I had some creative ideas that I wanted to share. Or more appropriately, some practical ideas for creative people. I spent a lot of 2019 talking to folks at conferences, events, through our websites that we run, and I constantly heard from creative professionals and aspiring professionals how they were struggling. Artists who just couldn't find new inspiration, people who were feeling the economic crunch, or questioning whether they should change careers. Well, I sat down and just tried to think up some of the most practical advice that I could offer so you could have a more successful and a more creative new year. So let's jump in and start to explore these. Now, one of the things that stands out to me is that it has really become obvious that technology is getting in the way. Those of you who know me may find this statement kind of odd because I work with a lot of tech. I love technology and I think it is a great tool, but Albert Einstein wasn't too far off here when he said that technology has exceeded our humanity. And what this is really leading to is that we have to find balance. Our tools are there to serve us. If your tools are getting in the way or you don't feel comfortable with them, you lack the technical knowledge, then it's impeding your creativity. And don't just do something because the tool can do it. Find a reason and find something that you want to create. Keep in mind, I really like technology. I find it incredibly useful, but technology is not always going to be the answer. While I'm well known for recording technical videos about how to do things with different software applications or with your camera for photography or video, today we're not going to talk about technology that much. There's some technology woven in here, but there's a lot of practical advice about business, about life, and about creativity. So technology is not the answer. Really, technology is just another word for tool. And as an artist or a creative person, you need to use as many tools as possible to unlock your creativity, to capture it, and to share what's beautiful in your mind. You have to choose, though, what's right for you. And that's why I'm going to offer you 31 different ideas. The first month of the new year has 31 days, so you can consider one of these on each day. I'll release this video all at once, and I'm also going to release it in little daily snippets because a lot of creative folks don't have the attention span to make it through the entire video in one sitting. But ultimately, you have to decide which of these ideas work for you and make some real-world changes if you want to thrive and grow. Now, you might be wondering, who the heck is this guy? What gives me the right to challenge you? Well, let me share just a little bit about my background briefly. I'm a visual storyteller, and my passion has been the fusion of photography and video. I'm well known in both of these two genres, particularly for helping people push the envelope and learning how to do new things. I'm also a husband and a father, though. And these two things are more important to me than my career. As such, some of the things I'm going to share with you are going to be a little bit more reflective that should help you be challenged and grow as a person. I think it's important that you learn to balance your professional aspirations with your personal ones. Now, to give you a little bit about my background, if you're not familiar, I've put out a lot of books through the years. If you just look me up on Amazon.com or maybe even your bookshelf, there's a good chance you'll easily find me. I write about photography and video and computer graphics. I've also released more than 200 video courses through a variety of platforms like Lynda.com, LinkedIn Learning, Kelby One, and also ThinkTap Learn. For more than 20 years, I've spoken at industry events for photography, video, and design. I publish two websites and have been publishing to the internet since 1995. I really believe in sharing information and getting it out there. But I'm also a business owner. In fact, I own multiple businesses, and we'll talk about that as a strategy for success. And creatively, I make my living as both a photographer and a director for video. My video production company is Red Pixel. We're celebrating our 20 years in business, and we do a lot of work for creative companies. A lot of nonprofits, high tech companies, and nonprofit and trade associations that are trying to raise awareness. Our specialty is a weird mix, but it's a great group of people, and I'm really proud to have started this company. 
We also have a video production facility called Media Factory DC. So I not only have to run a company, but we have a facility and we've had to learn a lot about operations, marketing, and other skills since it's open to others in our industry. And ThinkTap is my design company that creates ideas and also publishes knowledge. It's behind the website PhotoFocus, but we also put on events and speak at industry events. Do training, consulting for a lot of folks in the technical industries for both photography and video. Now, one of my more unusual skills is project management. And this is a skill that I would encourage that you should learn. We'll talk more about project management later. And it was hard for me to complete my project management degree, but it has made a world of difference as I find balance. Now, I've had a few weird jobs and they all have really led to this experience that are gonna help me hopefully help you. I served as a board member for the Adobe Creative Cloud Advisory Group, helping Adobe launch Creative Cloud. I've also been a product designer for Athentech and now work with Skylum Software, helping manage some of their photography products. In the past, I've been a consultant to Apple and Adobe for numerous product improvements, as well as worked with Apple and Adobe on their end user and instructor certification programs. I'm a certified project management professional, and I work on the NAB Post-Production World Conference as the program manager now for many years. If you'd like to connect, you're welcome to look me up on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect with fellow professionals in our industry. Just let me know that you watch this video and you'd like to connect. So what is it about creativity? Well, the thing you need to realize is that change is the only thing that is constant. If you're looking for predictability, you're in the wrong industry. If you want to be a creative person, you need to be comfortable with change. Technology changes, business changes, relationships change. You have to evolve. This evolution is going to be critical to your long-term success. If you feel stuck, you need to get unstuck. Otherwise, you're just a few months away from failure. But the problem is that you likely feel overwhelmed by choice. There are so many options, so many tools, so many demands on your time. There's also a world of distractions. There's so much content out there that's really compelling. Like a lot of you, I watch TV, but I try to limit it. There are so many great shows, of course, and so many options with on-demand streaming services that you could literally spend every moment in front of a screen. And when I look at my children and their generation, screen time is one of the biggest issues that keep them from succeeding. This leads to people feeling completely disconnected. I watch people, instead of talking to those around them, looking at screens. And we're all guilty of this. You're out with your spouse or significant other, and you can't stop looking at the phone rather than looking at the person you love that's in the room with you. Electronic devices can get in the way. And I want to encourage you to try to remove them from your life at certain time periods. Put them down when you come home for dinner. Don't take them to the gym if you can avoid it. Try to be unplugged for certain periods so you can focus on the moment at hand. Now, I'm often asked, what's the secret? How do I do it? People want to know, how is it possible that I put out multiple websites, write books, produce videos, have client work, do consultations? It's hard. There's a great team. But people think there's a secret to being successful. There's not a secret. It's really pretty obvious. It comes down to vision, which is pretty likely that you've heard this before. You need to know what it is you want. Have a clear vision on what success looks like, what it is you want to do. And then you need to do the work. Now, these two items are really obvious, but it's the third one I'm going to add that most people don't know or they don't understand its importance. And that is focus. It doesn't matter if you have a clear vision on what you want and you're willing to work hard if you're constantly distracted. Focus is the ability to remove what doesn't matter. And if you work as a photographer, a graphic designer, a video editor, you know this. 
It's all about removing the things that don't belong. Yet there are so many things in our life that take away from our focus that it's difficult to succeed. So for 2020, I'm going to give you 31 things that I want you to focus on. One for each day of the month. And you're going to need to process these. You know, there's a good chance that you're already doing some of these. So if that's the case, congratulations. You're going to still need to make a change. What I want you to do is remember that 2020 is a new year. So you don't have to really be concerned about what you did in the past. This is the chance for you to reinvent yourself, to try something new. Here are the 31 things that I think you can do for a more successful 2020. I want you to make a change and implement at least 10 of these in the first quarter. And there's no cheating. If you've already done some of these, pick 10 new ones. This isn't about implementing everything or how many of these can you do so quickly. It's about meaningful change. And I'm going to share with you some of my ideas that have come from personal failures as well as successes and why I think these are important if you consider yourself a creative person. Number one ties into the focus that we talked about earlier. Eliminate distractions. You need to get rid of the things that are distracting you from what you really need to pay attention to. This takes control. How much television do you watch? If it's more than an hour a day, that's too much. Now, I know that sounds hard because there's so many good shows, but you need to find some control here. And if you are going to watch television, combine it with another activity like exercise. Get on the treadmill and watch some television. Or if you're stuck on a car trip and you're not the driver, watch some TV then or an airplane flight. Take your television time for when there's nothing else you can really be doing. If you're finding yourself going out to bars or nightclubs a lot, cut back. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't socialize, but these types of environments are going to pull you away and really take your time. Email is one that people just get sucked into. For my email, I actually don't have it set to auto-download. I need to click on the email button for it to download. That way, I can work uninterrupted, and after a while, when I feel like I should check, I'll go ahead and pull down email. That doesn't mean that I don't have a Slack channel open for the office to reach out to me from time to time so that I can be reached quickly, but that's really limited to people that I have a relationship with, and if you don't have coworkers, you don't need that. Sure, you do need to check the email from time to time to get back to clients, but you don't need to have a constant stream because it's just a distraction. And social media is even worse. There's nothing wrong with Facebook. I use it all the time. But you will find yourself watching content that you don't need. Looking through an Instagram feed for inspiration, and two hours later, you've done nothing. Instead, try to limit yourself. Set a timer when you do this. Go ahead and trigger a 10-minute timer on your smartphone, and then when the alarm goes off, force yourself to switch back. Our next tip is to focus your specialties. Identify the skills and opportunities that you have, and then focus on those. What this comes down to is really what I refer to as targeting. You need to identify the skills that you have that are unique. It doesn't mean that no one else has them but identify what you are best at. While there's lots of things I can do, I choose to do the things that are most unique because it allows me to work less and get paid more. Those general skills you have are certainly useful and you can draw upon them as needed for projects, but market and focus on the skills that you're best at, as well as pay attention to in-demand skills. Look for new opportunities, develop the skills that you have and develop new skills so that there are new market opportunities as things become more and more saturated. And make sure you build out a portfolio of work samples that illustrate these skills. There are lots of different technology sites out there for building portfolios. You can use Adobe Portfolio, websites that allow you to build photography portfolios or sites like Vimeo to build out portfolios for videos. 
but definitely have samples of your work ready to show what you're capable of. And then marketing. You have to put materials out so people can find you. Not just a website, but actively market. Go to events. Go to industry events. Go to opportunities. Go to business networking events. Find new clients and talk to them. I also suggest capturing personal knowledge. There's a lot of great ideas you have, and you need to save them for those days when you're feeling a little bit stifled, or you just want to build upon that knowledge and not have to keep going back to starting at the beginning. So for things like this, it means reuse and recycle. For your business, standards and procedures. Write down things that are good ideas. Write down the way that you want things done. So as your business grows and new people come on board, you can share with them operating procedures. With software, make presets. Design your own. This isn't about buying a bunch of other people's presets. Start to save your own great presets. And if you're going to work with color a lot, lookup tables are absolutely amazing. LUTs allow you to encapsulate all of your color grading for color and tone into a LUT. And that LUT can be used in photography and video software almost universally. It really comes down to this. The less effort, the faster and more powerful you will be. Bruce Lee said it best. Let me show you a way to pull this off. There's a free piece of software called LUT Generator. You can find it on the internet and simply download it. Feel free to make a donation if you find it useful. In the folder is a pattern that looks like this. You can open it up in any image editing software or even video software. Although most video software apps can easily export lookup tables built in. Let me show you how this works. Let's say I'm working in an image editor and I decide to make some general changes developing a particular look for an image. Now what I do is select the developed image and this test pattern and just choose to sync the adjustments. Now the color adjustments have been applied to the test pattern. Simply export this as a new PNG file. We'll leave it with the original size and save that as PNG. Now launch LUT generator and just select that new image that you made. It'll analyze the file and make a new LUT. Let's call this Outdoors. Now using a variety of other programs including video apps or even tools like Photoshop, you can reuse that LUT. I'll just add a lookup table adjustment layer and load the LUT I made. There it is, outdoors. And you see it's instantly applied, giving that new look and transferring it. This makes it really simple to reuse these across multiple images. And you see that the color grade has moved easily. I'll point out a few more resources to learn about LUTs in the description of this video. Now let's switch back to the personal side. You need to build meaningful connections. It's the quality of your network, not the quantity of people in it. This is all about being real and having real connections. So attend face-to-face -face events. Go to networking events. Go to industry events, user groups, etc. Pick up the phone and call people. It's not about sending emails or Facebook messages. It's actually about talking. If you could reach them, all the better. And speaking of Facebook, my rule is to prune the connections below 600. This way, you can actually keep up on things. Now, you'll have to decide what number works for you. But remember, if this isn't a person you've talked to in a while, someone that you actually care about or have connected with, remove them from your network, or at least take a break from them without unfriending them. This way, you cut down on the clutter. And I can't emphasize this one enough, send thank you notes. There are so many times that this has saved me. By sending personal thank you notes and have everyone in the office or in the team sign it, people remember that they're working with people. People appreciate this. 
It's the thought that counts, and sending a thank you note shows that you appreciated the work. It reminds them that you're a real person, and in the future, when they're thinking about who to work with, they're going to remember you. And if you make a mistake, well, again, they remember that you're people or a person who worked on the project. Make that personal connection. We get hundreds of emails a day, but only a few pieces of real mail, and most of those are ads or junk. A thank you note really stands out. Here's another practical one. Get an accountant. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting paid fairly or being profitable, and an accountant can help on this front. Money is the fuel for creativity. You don't have to be rich, but you need to be paid fairly. Most creative people aren't very good at personal finances, but an accountant can help. It's critical that you make decisions and adjustments monthly. You need to know how you're doing. Do you need to save money? Do you need to prepare for taxes? Do you need to be setting aside more? Do you need to be cutting back? Is it time to spend money and grow? The accountant can help you here. I do recommend you learn the basics of using the accounting software yourself so you can do some of your data entry and look at the data and information whenever you need to, but an accountant is going to be able to help you walk through and understand where you're at and what's happening. Next one is learn how your computer works. And I mean truly understand what you own. I talk to so many people who work creatively who don't understand their hardware. It's great to have power, but you need to have balanced systems. This means you need to know how to fix common problems, repairing permissions, restoring a corrupted piece of software, running updates on your computer. Is there anything you can upgrade? Adding in memory or an external GPU to boost performance? Where are the weak links? I see people complaining all the time about software, and they don't understand that the bottleneck is their hard drive, or that they skimped on their computer and got an i3 or an i5 processor, but are trying to do professional level work. You need to buy the best equipment you can afford and make sure that that equipment is accessible. This means either having good credit if you need to not have the money on hand but need to buy more, or saving up until you can afford what you really need. When you add power, that's great, but don't overbuy. Gear acquisition syndrome is a real thing. We used to have a person at our office who had a box arrive almost daily from Amazon or B&H. They were constantly buying equipment. And then as soon as they decided it didn't work or they didn't like it, they were reselling it, but at a loss. You don't need to overbuy. You need to maximize what you have. Stop buying gear just to decide that you don't like it, and then you're going to sell it off. It's not a good idea. Instead, if you're unsure about something, rent the gear. Try it out. Make sure it works for you. There's a lot of great rental companies like Lens Rentals, for example, that make it easy to find the right equipment or to try things out in your workflow. Instead of selling gear off, consider recycling it within the office or moving it further down the food chain. Now, that doesn't mean that I never sell equipment, but I make sure that there's backups and spare pieces, and a lot of old equipment often comes in handy. Think of your entire pipeline as well. Make sure that if you're upgrading things, you've thought it through. For example, buying a new camera that shoots 4K or 6K means that you may need to buy faster hard drives or an improved computer. Don't top out your computer with a bunch of RAM if it doesn't have the processing power to go with it, with the central processor or the graphics processor. Think these things through and really balance it out. The challenge, though, is we do live in a society where everything is disposable. People throw things away rather than fix them. So try to make sure you understand what you have and maximize your equipment. Don't be so quick to throw it away and buy something new. Going back to the personal side for a moment, exercise. Six days a week if possible, and I recommend doing it first thing in the morning. Exercise solves so many problems. I'm not in perfect health, but a few years ago, my health was really far off. 
I had gotten knocked down a flight of stairs and really hurt myself, had to have surgery. Not long after that, I had a tooth infection that put me in the hospital, and actually, I got a secondary infection that almost killed me. It was pretty scary. I learned that being not in good shape really caused all sorts of problems, and I want to be around to see my wife and my kids. But it's not just the long-term benefits. There's a lot of short-term benefits. Exercise leads to clearer focus. You're going to have new ideas. You're going to be able to solve things and think them through more quickly. It boosts your creativity because it gets everything flowing. And it leads to long-term better health as well as short-term better health. You're going to have a longer life and more energy. I encounter so many people in our industry that have poor health. And again, I'm not a fitness nut, but I do exercise regularly. I could eat better. I could sleep more. I can choose to not occasionally pull through the Chick-fil-A drive through I'm not perfect, but I exercise six days a week, sometimes twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. And I feel so much better for it, and you will too. If you don't know where to start, get a personal trainer. Sign up for an exercise class. Go to your community center. Find something that works with your budget and make this change. It makes all the difference. If you have back pain, it's because you're not exercising enough and you're sitting in a chair all day long. Or you don't know how to lift things and you're carrying heavy equipment everywhere. Exercise solves problems. Learn to read contracts. Understand what it is you're signing. As creative people, we're not very good at this and you need to be smart. Learn to read it. Read it and understand what's there. This also applies to things like terms of service on websites. And you should have a lawyer, not somebody you work with all the time, but somebody that you can send things to, ask questions of, have them review those big contracts before you sign them. If possible, try to also take ownership of your work. Now, this isn't always going to be an option. It's easier for photographers than video professionals, but make sure if you're giving up your rights that you do retain moral rights or the ability to show the work in your portfolio. I'll give you an example of those terms of service. I like YouTube, I use YouTube, but you have to be careful. For example, if you look at the YouTube terms of service and you really dig into it, there are a few things that really start to stand out. You'll see words like sub-licensable, which means that they can actually license your work to someone else. Transferable, without limitation. This means you're giving YouTube the rights to put your content in other places and move it around. And even if you take it down, it's possible that other people have made derivative works or reshared it or published it as a new video. This is why you need to read through these and get familiar, as well as consider if other options like Vimeo, where you're paying for a service, make sense. Now, here's one I'm guilty of. Add color. And I mean to your wardrobe. Stop only wearing black or shades of gray. I look at my Christmas presents this year, and I got a lot of black clothing. My wife bought me black clothing. My father brought me black clothing. My kids bought me a black t-shirt. Chances are, if you're a creative person, you probably have a lot of black. So add a little color. Go vibrant. Even if it's underneath, go for some colored underwear. Look for accessories, ties, belts. I do have a great collection of incredible belts. If you're looking to add them, I'll show you a link here in just a moment, but there's a great artist that I love and it gives me a splash of color, even if I'm wearing a suit coat. Add some color to your environment, wall art, things around you. I realize that a lot of times we need to work with gray backgrounds and neutral desktops, but you can still have some color in the room. And try to design color. Change yourself. Work in new colors into your designs when you're not constrained by corporate policy. One of my favorite sources of color, John Y. He makes these incredible belts as well as other options like camera straps and guitar straps, shirts, hoodies, etc. But he just has these amazing belts. One of a kind belts, graphic patterns, classic ones, and these storyline belts. You'll find a great collection of color here that you can just weave into your wardrobe 
and have a little dash of creativity that you know is there. Want to be successful in business? Diversify. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. It's important that you have a safety net, that you have different opportunities for revenue. This might mean multiple businesses. While I have a video production company, I also have a publishing company, and I also have a studio facility that we let other people rent when we're not using it. Multiple businesses means multiple streams of revenue. And you might not be comfortable with this, but you need to try to become an entrepreneur. If all you do is work for others, you're never going to have long-term revenue as soon as you stop working. Sure, you can save and you can put money away and try to build up your retirement fund. And those are good, important things. But being an entrepreneur means looking for opportunities, putting work into things that are going to pay you back later, whether that's authoring a book or creating something, or registering your photography's copyright and making it available on different platforms for licensing or stock. It's great to have revenue come in at different points. These revenue streams are critical. When I take time off to be with my family or need to deal with something, there's revenue still coming in. When I got sick, there were still streams of revenue coming in. It's important as a creative professional that you get paid for additional sources of income, not just for pushing buttons. So try to diversify your business for safety. Speaking of business, it's a good idea to get certified. Sometimes proof matters. A lot of the tools you work with offer certification programs. So you could take a look at software certification. There are also professional certifications. I mentioned earlier, I'm a certified project management professional. That creativity is combined with real-world business sense, as well as the ability to manage complex projects. That has landed us so much work, because not only do I have this certification, we've woven project management throughout our business. And this means that clients trust us, and we continue to get bigger projects. But if you are thinking of software certifications, there's a lot out there. And companies like Adobe and others often offer two different levels an expert level, and an associate or an introductory level designed for recent graduates. Now, you might be thinking, why do this? It's all about the portfolio and who you know. And that's true, but eventually, two candidates are going to emerge that both have great portfolios or work samples, and both have good references. And it's the professional certifications and the technical certifications that let people know that you really know your stuff. Learn the exposure triangle. This is true for both photo and video. Knowing the exposure triangle is essential to succeeding. Now, I'm not going to go through all the points, but it's pretty simple. When you try to properly expose an image, whether it's photo or video, you have three main components. The shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture. The aperture is how large of an opening you have on the camera, which is driven by the lens. As you adjust this aperture, it lets in more light, and it also affects the depth of field. This is really related to how much of an area is in focus, particularly when close up. We can also often adjust the shutter speed, and this controls the freezing of the action or the blurring. If you're out shooting fast-moving objects like flying birds, you better use a short shutter speed to capture the action or sports. And this is why a lot of people have blurry photos or shaky images, and they don't understand why. And lastly is the ISO, which is the sensitivity of your camera. This is really going to drive the camera sensor's sensitivity. But if you push this too high, you get grain. These are the three legs to the table, and you have to know how to use each one. Sure, you can cheat and get by with auto for a while, and you might feel comfortable that you've stepped up to aperture priority or shutter priority, but ultimately, you need to know how to shoot manual. There's nothing wrong with aperture priority. I use it all the time. But in that case, I'm still using other options to drive things, and I might override some of those choices to get the quality of shot that I want. You can find out a lot more about the exposure triangle over at my website, photofocus.com, as well as at ThinkTap Learn, and I'll put some resources in the description of this video. 
Here's a simple one for you, and I'm totally serious. Read comic books. Visual storytelling is a compelling medium. The great thing about comic books is you'll learn about flow. This really helps you understand how things flow together. Shot composition. Great ways to design composition. If you look at comic books, there's no limitations to where the camera was. So you'll see incredible shots. You'll see people design things that are just awesome. Great compelling images to look at. And it will push you to discover new angles for your photos and videos. It's also a great use of color. You'll see incredible color palettes and how color can affect mood and story. And one of the things I like the best is brevity in storytelling. I often encounter people who use too many images in their portfolio or have too many images in a slideshow to tell a story or videos that are too long. Comic books are usually pretty tight on the story page count and they learn how to get the point across in a limited number of pages. Plus, if you've paid attention to the industry, Comic books, comic book movies, games based on comic books, entertainment options have just boomed. This success is all tied to the storytelling and the great characters and how they appeal to people. So, you might think it a little bit geeky, but head on down to the comic book shop and pick up some graphic novels. Or, you can do what I do and subscribe to digital apps and get great access without the clutter. If you're looking for a place to start, and you're a little bit new to comic books, here's a few of my favorites. Now, in no particular order, here are six comic book series that I'd recommend that really push the envelope. Preacher, quite dark, but an excellent series that really explores character in depth. One from my childhood, and that's ElfQuest. It's a fantasy book, and one that explores the relationship between two different cultures. Fables completely reimagines the characters that you knew from fairy tales and fables and puts them into New York City and has great story development over many years. You might have seen the movie or the TV show, but if you've never read the comic book, Watchmen is something not to be missed. Really grim and dark, but still quite compelling. One you might not have heard of is Camelot 3000. An interesting limited series that's available in graphic novel form that takes the Knights of the Round Table and moves them into the future. And another one that's been developed into a TV show, but the comics are so much better, is the Runaway series that takes a look at teenage kids whose parents turn out to be actual supervillains and what happens as they discover their powers and their place in the world. Go to a conference. You're going to learn new things and open new doors. What I like about conferences is you learn new skills. You can't not learn new things at a conference. There's so many opportunities. Also, the chance to network. Some of my best friends I've met at professional events. Some of my people that I interact with and do business with have all come from conferences. You meet some of the best people because the people at conferences usually are the most passionate ones in their industry. What I like the best, though, is you learn what you don't know. Now, this may seem strange, but I love going to conference sessions where I think I know something, and then the presenter walks me through their workflow or opens up something that I never would have thought of. It's amazing how we think we know a lot, and it turns out we really don't know that much. So by going to an expert, by sitting down and opening yourself up to a structured presentation, you're going to get exposed to new ideas. Here's one that I always tell folks, go to museums, learn from the past and experience the future. What's great about museums is you can really open your eyes. There's two things I do in every country I visit. One is I go to a museum. It's a chance to really experience what that country's interested in and what sort of art they value. And there's such huge differences around the world. And the other, believe it or not, is I go to a McDonald's. Now, this may seem strange, but McDonald's is one of the most successful restaurants worldwide. And if you go to a McDonald's in a foreign country, you'll be amazed at how the menus change and how it's localized. But certain aspects carry through. It's an interesting cultural study and will also show you a lot about 
different countries. What I like about museums, though, is they invite you to explore creativity in all forms. Even if you're not into art or painting, go and learn. You can see a lot about composition and color. Going to an aeronautics museum, one about air and space, will teach you to think about design and color and form. There's so much that you can learn from these different museums about human culture. I went to the Great Marine Corps Museum and learned so much, even though I'm not that interested in military culture, I found it fascinating to learn about the wars, the conflict, and the humanity. And while you're there, look for inspiration. Don't be shy about taking photos unless it's specifically stated that you can't. Just bring your smartphone in. Capture color palettes. Take down reference images. Pick up an art book, a brochure, anything that you can leave with so you can revisit this and study it in the future. Take a dance class. I'm serious. Absolutely serious. Take a dance class. Find rhythm and learn to react. Dancing is a great skill. It really teaches you to be in the moment, to pick up on another person's movement, to listen to music, to be able to respond to stimuli. I've taken a lot of dance through the years. First, when I was wrestling in college, our coach encouraged us to take dance. I've taken ballet. I've taken modern dance. Then after I got injured, I had to learn to do choreographed routines as a cheerleader, believe it or not, and even do a cartwheel. Now, what I learned here is to listen to the music and discover rhythm. Rhythm and patterns is so much about creativity. Graphic design, photography, video are all filled with rhythm. You also learn about your body, to feel things, to start to be sensitive. Being creative is being in tune with your body and your environment. And dancing helps you find that. Plus, it translates into better body mechanics. You'll be better at camera operation, better at movement, better at design, better able to carry your own gear. And if you've got a social relationship, it's a chance to connect and really feel part of something as well as closer to the person you care about. Go outside. Not this very moment, I'd like you to finish this video, but today, even if it's raining or cold, go outside and experience the world. You need to get new views. There's physical benefits here. Fresh air, exercise, the ability to just get some sunlight. Chances are you need more vitamin D. Just ask your doctor at your next physical. It's amazing how many people don't get enough sunlight. And while you're out there, this is a chance for meditation or really finding some tranquility. Soak up nature, take a walk, experience the wilderness. Even just a walk in a park can be helpful. Exploration is also key to new ideas. A chance to get out there, see things, explore the world. I've been fortunate to travel the world a lot, and I'm amazed at how different the different areas of our world are. From deserts to oceans to mountains to forests, there's so much variety, and you need to get out there and experience it to realize you are a part of a bigger world. It's also a great opportunity for photography and video. Feeling stuck in a rut? Take a trip. Not sure what to do for the day? Just go out and shoot nature, capturing images. Try to just do something different and experience nature, and it's going to really unlock things for you. And I really believe this. I spend at least one weekend a month camping and two to three weeks a year at summer camps with my kids, traveling, doing high adventure. These sorts of activities are wonderful and get you outdoors. You need to develop some rules for your business, simple guidelines that you and if you've got employees or team members can follow. I'm going to tell you my three most important rules that have helped me through many business challenges. These rules serve as a compass, something that you can quickly check to help you. The first one, I have to admit, comes from Star Wars. It's the bad feeling rule. Now, joking aside, if you've got a bad feeling, you need to trust it. People often forget that we are still, at heart, animals and creatures with instincts. Between the coffee, the lack of sleep, and the electronic devices, we dull those senses. But ultimately, you know when something is wrong. You have a feeling. You can pick up on it. 
If you think the client might be upset and you have a bad feeling, reach out. If you think something is going wrong, double check things. I've rarely had something go wrong in my business where somebody didn't have a bad feeling. You have to learn to trust this. The next one is my rule of threes, not to be confused with the rule of thirds for composition. The rule of threes states that I have three criteria for taking a job. The first is that the work is going to be good for my portfolio. The second is that I will be paid fairly. The third is that I enjoy the people that I'm working with. Now, the reality here with the rule of threes is that two out of three ain't bad. What I mean by this is that you should accept two of those items. The people may be difficult to work for, a tough client, but you're getting paid well and it's good work for your portfolio. That's great. But I don't care how famous the client is, if the work's not good and you're not getting paid fairly, don't just do something for low pay for your portfolio. If you are loving what you do and you're getting a chance to work with great nonprofits, well, you might not need to make as much on that job or even do some work for free. It's good for the soul. Strive for all three, but settle for two. But remember, having all three is important. Work that's good for the portfolio, people you enjoy working with, and a fair payment. My last rule is the like and respect rule. This says that ultimately, people choose to do business with those that they like and respect. This means it's important for your clients to get to know you, that your company has a culture, and that people can really understand who you are and what's important. Let your personality show through a bit because people will connect with you. And this means that if you form business relationships that have a friendship angle, be a good friend. Take the time to answer people's questions. Stay connected. Remember to send those thank you notes. Not everybody has to be a person that you have dinner with or go out for a beer with, but you need to really show that you like your clients and that you have respect for them and they will return the same feelings. Get a business degree or a certificate because knowledge is power. And I'm being serious here. You can go to a community college or a night school program and easily get this. It's not about the name of the school or anything else. My business degree was from Keller. Keller is now owned by DeVry, which is not a tremendously well-respected institution. But I'll tell you what, I had a great program. I passed my project management professional test on the first try. I got all sorts of skills that mattered. For my undergraduate, I went to Drake University. Great school for journalism, loved it, but I'd been accepted to Northwestern, which was my dream. That got taken away from me because I couldn't afford it. But Drake turned out to be so amazing. I got so much from going there, as well as met my wife and built lifelong friends and got the skills that I needed to succeed. It was my academic advisor who pushed me to try new things and forced me to look at things holistically to really understand that it was not just the technology that mattered. So getting a business degree, it's not about the degree and where it comes from. It's about the practical skills, the experience you're going to get as you're forced to learn new things. I recommend project management because it's so important to what we do, but there's lots of options out there and it doesn't need to be a full degree. You can do a small certificate program that entitles five or six classes. Just get what you need so you understand things like contracts and negotiations and basic business management principles. This is one of the weakest areas for creative people, and they suffer for it all the time being taken advantage of. It's going to give you the confidence you need. I don't care if it's community college but take the experience and get registered and get this business experience into your system. It really makes a difference. Use artificial intelligence. The robots are not the enemy. Now, I was just as scared as Terminator as a kid as many of you probably were, or perhaps some of the sequels. But AI is amazing. It's great for saving time. So many of the tools we use for photography and video 
and design benefit from AI. I do a lot of work right now with a company called Skyla, and they really impress me with what they're doing. I help work on Luminar, one of their software products for photographers, and it's amazing what the team comes up with. Just huge time savings. Companies like Digital Anarchy can do great things to really save you time by recognizing and doing speech translations. Adobe has a bunch of AI. Lumberjack Systems is another tool. There are so many different options here where this comes together. Now, what I like about AI is the image awareness. It can look at the image and make recommendations, much more than an auto button, generate masks, selective adjustments, etc. And it can even suggest values or simplify the user interface. AI is amazing. Let me show you really quick. There's a lot of great AI tools out there, but one of the ones I love is this one in Photoshop for object selection. You just draw around the object that you want and it's going to automatically figure it out. It uses AI to try to detect. And then you can click the select and mask option and very quickly use a smart radius to refine things and you're done. Photoshop offers other great AI tools, but I'm more familiar and love the ones that Skylum has made. For example, the ability to quickly fix exposure. AI Accent is able to adjust color and tone and enhance a sky. Or add detail with AI structure. The ability to find the sky that might be a little bit boring and automatically replace it with a new sky. And you can load in your own here as well. And not only does it replace the sky, but maps that color to the scene so it looks believable. If working with portraits, the ability to find things and intelligently pick up blemishes in the skin with one click to go through and find any unwanted blemishes and remove them. Or to find the eyes and whiten them, enhance them. If we zoom in here and you look at that, you see that the eyes just popped. Looks so much better. Just great control here. Enhance the eyebrows. The fact that you don't have to paint or make a selection here is just incredible. It really knows how to find things with the power of AI, and that translates to faster working. I'm still in control of things, but I don't have to rework. Want to fill in the light on the face? It's just a slider. These sort of controls are awesome. And while you're at it, embrace automation. Almost every software tool has batch processing or batch automation. I get paid for results these days, not how many hours I work. So it's all about speed. Remember, time is money. So if you can use actions in Photoshop or scripting in tools like After Effects, can you use batch processing? While you're out there, join communities, not just online ones. Those are fine, but reality is so much better. You're going to want to find communities that you could be a member of. User groups, people that share a similar interest in a tool. They can help answer questions when you have them, as well as expose you to new ideas. Every time I go to a user group, I get a new idea that I didn't have before. Whether it's on workflow, business, or technology, I get something new. Facebook groups are also great for those times that you can't travel. Find like-minded people. But some groups are quite negative and others are positive. Try to avoid the groups where negativity is common if you can do so. LinkedIn also offers many great groups on business topics that are similar to Facebook groups but more professional and allow you to engage with others. And look for professional associations in your market. Are there groups you can join that will really help you stay connected with others that have similar interests or face similar challenges. Here's a piece of technical advice. Invest in lenses. Good glass lasts a long time. I see people constantly churning and buying new camera bodies when what they should be doing is investing in good lenses. Lenses control the light, whether it's photography or video, and they're the most important ingredient in image quality. If you can't afford great lenses, rent lenses. We rent great cinema glass all the time for video productions, getting the lenses we need at a reasonable price when we have a big job. 
You can also buy lenses, and I recommend saving up and buying the good lenses. Take the time and really get the money that you need or use your credit wisely and buy the better lens. You don't have to go crazy here, but a good lens is going to work for many years and can be moved from one camera body to another. Plus, they have much higher resale value if you go to sell them. And conversely, don't buy cheap lenses. You're just going to have to replace them and you're not going to be satisfied. Try to get what's reasonable. You don't have to always buy the brand from your particular manufacturer. There are a lot of great third-party lens manufacturers and specialty lens manufacturers. I buy from many different companies, but buy the better option when you can. And if you can't afford the best of the best, don't be afraid to look for used lenses. I've bought many used lenses from both Lens Rentals and B&H. They both have great used departments and the quality is certified with a money back guarantee and they work fantastic. There are always plenty of other people willing to sell their lenses quickly and so you can often pick up great deals. If you haven't done so, it's time to master RAW. It's both the now and the future. This is such higher quality, and for photography, it is the standard. I realize that there are a few genres that need to shoot JPEG, but change your workflow. I used to think that I had to shoot JPEG for time lapse, and then I spent some time working with Vincent LaFerre, who's one of the most respected photographers and a man that I'm continually impressed by the quality and his creativity. He challenged me. I was helping him learn about After Effects, and he pushed me to really understand RAW and how it needed to be a part of my time-lapse workflow. And it was completely changed my entire workflow for the better. RAW gives you tremendous flexibility. Now with video, RAW is an option, and I do shoot it occasionally on things like my Blackmagic Pocket Camera or on Canon's cameras, but it does consume a lot of data and it can be challenging to work with. So if you don't have the processing power, you can really take a look at shooting it in the future, but start to dabble. RAW changes everything. You have so much more data to work with, such tremendous flexibility, and it just unlocks the full image quality. You've heard me mention it a few times, but project management is essential. Every video and photo job can benefit from the practice of project management. It lets you take control. And this is the formal study of project management, the actual business practices. There's a lot of great books and video courses available. It's not so much about software. I do use tools like Basecamp to help organize things. Without project management skills, the software doesn't do much. This is the best way to increase profitability. It helps you learn from mistakes, eliminate risk, and increase how much money you make and reduces the amount of time spent. It also reduces stress, which is good for long-term health and successful relationships with your clients. Earlier, we mentioned raw, but if raw video is not an option, the next best thing is shooting log or logarithmic because it gives you a lot more flexibility. With log, it's all about control. It gives you more flexibility in capture because it's gonna make sure that you don't crush the shadows or blow out the highlights. It also gives you greater flexibility when editing because the cameras are easier to match. This means that if you're mixing cameras together, log footage is easier to bring out the color during the edit and make things look more consistent. It also just gives greater control across the board. When shooting log, I recommend taking advantage of something like an X-Rite color checker. This ensures that you have good reference material so you know exactly the colors that you're aiming for. With log, it really compresses the highlights and the shadows and ensures that you don't blow out detail. But having this reference detail means that you can get accurate color later. Just like how it's really difficult to screw up white balance when shooting raw, shooting log will make it easier to get accurate color. A log shot looks a little bit washed out, and it'll vary from shot to shot and camera to camera, but what happens here is it ensures that the blacks are not crushed because the darkest areas don't become pure black and those bright highlights don't get blown out. Then, through color grading, 
you can really push the limits and get bright, vivid whites and rich, dark blacks without really losing detail. This shot I just shown you was graded by one of my friends, Robbie Carmen of DC Color, and also behind the website Mixing Light. He's one of the best colorists I know and does amazing work. Speaking of creativity, it goes hand in hand with copyright. It's the foundation for everything that we do. You need to understand copyright, and nothing is more important to your success long term than understanding what this means. When it comes to copyright, it's about control. And you can decide to give up that control through options like Creative Commons, but you need to make that choice. I suggest you investigate the Copyright Alliance. It's a great nonprofit trade association that really has some tremendous resources on copyright. You can also take a look at copyright.gov from the US government to better understand the process. Know your rights and really understand things, as well as respect others' rights. I see so many people who work in creative fields who steal music and think it's okay to use music that they don't have a license to in their slideshows or video projects. Musicians are just as creative and important as brethren as photography and video. Don't steal from other creative people. The cost and the risks are huge. Same thing with images and other content. Make sure you have the rights to use what it is you are using. You need to acknowledge ignorance, and I don't mean acknowledge the people that you find difficult or tell people they're ignorant on Facebook. What I mean is realize that there is a lot left to learn. I talk to people all the time who are so confident in their knowledge. The challenge here is that we have a just-in-time learning society. People don't actually know stuff. They just go to YouTube and look it up. And this is awful. Not to say that YouTube can't be a resource. I occasionally go there and look things up too. But if you don't study things and really know them inside and out, you don't know what questions to ask. You don't know if it's the right answer. You don't know where to begin. And you waste so much time. Plus, when put on the spot, you really think that client wants to sit there and watch you stop to look something up? Are you going to get the shot if you have to pause every time to check something on the internet? You need to take the time to really study things and learn them. So, it's important here that you are self-aware. Set some reasonable goals for yourself about continuous education. Try to complete one to two books a month or two to four video courses. This is going to help you learn new things. Realize that you know a lot less than you actually know. And even at this point in my career, having written 40 books, I'm constantly amazed at what I don't know and what I can learn by taking the time to sit down with others and watch their presentations or listen to their ideas. Always be learning. In order to succeed, you have to be adding new skills and knowledge every day. It really comes down to this. You feel like you are strong and powerful, but that iceberg really has a lot below the surface. So while this looks huge and massive, there's so much more that you don't know. And this is really where it stands. So even though you may feel like there's a tremendous amount that you do know, there's a lot more below the surface that you don't see or don't yet know. And acknowledging ignorance is the first step to self-awareness. This one's important to me, and I think you need to try it as well. Volunteer and make a real difference. My volunteering is with the Boy Scouts of America. My son and daughter are both in the Scouts BSA program, and my son is also a Venture Scout. I've attended the World Scout Jamboree, I serve on the board for the National Capital Area Council, and I volunteer approximately five to 10 hours a week. Now, that may seem difficult with everything we have going on, but I wouldn't trade it. This volunteering goes so far. It inspires me, it recharges me, and it lets me give back. I don't care where you volunteer. Volunteer for what matters to you, but remember, volunteering matters. We have so many problems around the world, and 
a lot of them come down to people being selfish. People don't take the time to think of others. Whether it's through your church or through a nonprofit, a health cause, or a volunteer arts program, volunteer. Work with youth wherever possible. Find the time to invest in the future generations. By mentoring them, you will pass on skills. I'm amazed at the capabilities of younger generations. I thought I had it all. I was able to start on computer-based editing when it first came out. I was there for the invention of the digital camera. Yet, my kids can do so much. And other kids that I work with have such a great capacity. They're using tools and processing power that I didn't have access to until I was 25. And what it comes down to is this. There are so many things that you can do by helping others, and it really pays back. Why? Well, pick a cause. Pick something that matters to you and volunteer. Karma is real, and stay involved. Make this something you do every week, not just once a year during a holiday. Get out there and volunteer. You can do one thing the whole time or move around, but you'll also get great professional connections this way. There has been so many business opportunities that have come from the people that I know, referrals, recommendations, and even direct business. It's not why I do it, but it certainly is a benefit. Good people are around other good people, and good people volunteer because it matters. Karma is a reality. And you need to be putting something back before you can get something. I really like this quote, and it comes from Indira Gandhi. And she said, there are two kinds of people, those that do the work and those who take the credit. Try to be in the first group. There's less competition there. Volunteering, putting in the effort makes a difference. If you do one thing this year, volunteer. It will mean the world to others, and you'll get so much out of it. Do something great. You really can change the world if you try. The last thing I'll say, though, is this, and I'm going to give you an opportunity here because you've hung through this and have really shown interest in getting better. Learn every day. You don't know what you don't know, and learning is going to unlock these skills. 15 minutes a day should be spent on learning a new skill, bare minimum. Give up some television. Get up 15 minutes early. It doesn't matter. You can make the time. Every single day, seven days a week, learn something. Mix technology and art together. It doesn't have to all be about software or camera settings. You can learn about art, design, business. To make this easier, I've started a website called ThinkTap Learn. ThinkTap Learn is a collective of some of the best teachers I know, and we're sharing our video courses. And you can check out photofocus.com as well for wonderful articles. It's celebrating its 21st year at this point. It's one of the first websites on photography and still publishes every single day. But here's what I have for you. Thank you for hanging in here and showing that you want to be more successful in the new year. I want you to succeed. As one of my mentors would say, I'm rooting for you. Here is a code. NY New You. New Year, New You. The first 1,000 people who go to ThinkTapLearn can redeem this code for three months free access. This is unlimited access to more than 100 classes, including several that are going to build upon the skills we talked about here. Shooting raw, logarithmic, AI, all of these topics are covered. Business skills, project management. Just go to classes.thinktaplearn.com. Then click on pricing. Choose the quarterly plan and click sign up. In the coupon code field, enter the code NYNEWU and click the apply button. This will change it to free. You won't be asked for a credit card. It won't bill you when it expires. If you like the program, you're welcome to sign up and renew with a credit card, but you will get three months access for free and you don't need to enter a credit card 
or anything else. It will not automatically bill you at the end of the three months. This is me giving you access to hundreds of hours of content to help you be better. Then visit the new member page to learn how to sign up for classes. You'll also find a link for this in the top menu bar on the support section. This will walk you through how to enroll in classes and choose what you're interested in. I invite you to check this out. Again, the code is NYNEWU. You do need to take action though. There are so many things that are really challenging, so many things that are holding you back. The only way to succeed and thrive is to make a personal change. I challenge you to implement as many of these ideas as you can, and I invite you in the comment section below this video to share your own ideas. Please feel free to pass this video on to others, and I sincerely hope it helps you have a more creative and more successful new year. My name's Rich Harrington. Thank you for taking the time to listen to all of these ideas, and I really wish you the best as you set out for a new successful year.